So my name is Amaris Genius. I'm a Swedish Institute Scholarship recipient studying media communication and uh, cultural analysis at Sodaton University, Stockholm. And today, just in a few minutes, we'll be discussing the Swedish Institute Scholarship. And I want to say to everyone here, welcome. They're coming. <laughs> I said in Swedish, you know. I'm yeah. in Swedish class, so <laughs> I'm a good yeah. student at least. <laughs> it was good. It was it, it was correct. Yeah. So um, um we have a very special guest who will be speaking to us, answering our, our question in this session. And um Magnus Anderson is the SI scholarship program manager, and he will also introduce himself better. So at, at this point, uh, I want to hand over to him for him to introduce himself proper and then um, share his presentation with us. Thank you, Amara, to you. Um, okay, I'll start my presentation here. Just give me one second. So, is it okay? Is my presentation visible? Okay, good. So, hi everybody and uh, welcome to this presentation about the Swedish Institute Scholarships for Global Professionals. Uh, my name is Magnus Andersson and I am one of the program managers at the Swedish Institute. Uh, just a little reminder uh, to save your questions until after my presentation is done. I'll explain why at the end. Uh, it's just more convenient that way. Uh, the Swedish Institute is a public agency that promotes uh, interest and trust in Sweden all around the world. We work in the fields uh, of culture, education, science and business to strengthen international relations and development. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in Sweden during this pandemic uh, based on the way we have dealt with the virus and one of the areas that the Swedish Institute is working with is monitor and evaluate how everybody else perceives Sweden and the image of Sweden. So my colleagues have had a busy year to say the least. Um, another area we're working with is building and strengthening in relationship with people all over the world. We do this, we do this, this in, in many ways. And one of the ways is by offering scholarships uh, for people who wants to study a master's program in Sweden. So uh, right before the end of this pre presentation, I'll show you a short video. It's just three minutes long uh, to illustrate how you can apply and then summarize the most important dates as we are uh, closing in on this uh, application period. So let's get started. Um, So the Swedish uh, Institute Scholarship for Global, Global Professionals is a fully funded scholarship. We award it to uh, between 300 to 350 uh, recipients each year. And I, this, the, the, the variation in the numbers depends on the budget structure that we have. But I can say that for next year, we will be able to award uh, 350 uh, scholarships next year. So the scholarship, as I said, is a fully funded scholarship and it covers uh, your tuition fee, uh, which we will pay directly to the Swedish university. Uh, it also includes living expenses uh, of about 10,000 Swedish krons per month. And you will receive a one-time travel grant uh, when you arrive in Sweden. Uh, it depends on where you're from, but between 10 to 15,000 Swedish crowns um, will be paid to you. Uh, and I guess most of uh, the viewers right now are in the continent of Africa. So you will be getting the largest grant of 15,000 uh, Swedish crowns. You are insured against illness and accidents uh, uh, during your time here in Sweden by the Swedish state. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, a lot of programs, uh, master's program in Sweden at the universities uh, offers uh, semesters abroad that you can maybe you can study uh, like uh, a semester in 
a country outside of Europe. Um, just a short amount, this might affect your um, insurance uh, because the insurance is only valid in Sweden. And depending on your visa, it could be uh, valid in the, the whole Schengen area, which, which is basically Europe, but no further than that. So just a small reminder. Uh, the scholarship is also including a membership uh, in the Assign Network for Future Global Leaders. Uh, this is a platform to help you grow professionally and build your network while in Sweden. And also a membership of the Swedish Institute Alumni Network, um, which is basically a platform for continued networking uh, and further professional development at home. So um, we have a small unit that's working with the alumni network and they can provide funds for activities in uh, your home country or region when you are done with the master's program and home. So depending on which uh, master's degree you want to study in Sweden, there can be a one or two year program uh, starting in the autumn of semester 2021. They are all taught in English and we have a about 724, I think, selected master's program that are eligible uh, for the scholarship. Uh, and they, they uh, range from all over Sweden. So basically you can study in the south and all the way up to the north in Sweden, depending on what you wanna study. And first off, you need to of course hold a citizenship in one of the 42 eligible countries. Uh, we have 43 countries uh, that uh, could apply for the scholarship, but South Africa has a special one. Um, but this is just due to a, a political agreement uh, that we can't do anything about. Uh, the applicants must also uh, demonstrate at least 3,000 hours of work experience. And that is approximately one and a half years of full-time uh, work experience. Um, you need to have a demonstrated leadership experience. Um, this is not something we measure in time, just the fact that you have leadership experience. You need to be an international fee payer and you cannot have a dual citizenship in countries not listed on the DAC list. Um, just to make a, an example, if you have a Nigerian passport and a passport uh, a citizenship in, in a country in Europe, maybe just to give an example, like in Germany, then you're not eligible for this scholarship because if you have a dual citizenship, uh, maybe within Europe, then you can study for free in Sweden. So you don't need this scholarship. And of course you have to be admitted on uh, to an, an eligible master's program on time. Uh, the video in, at the end will um, uh, show you this. And you should not have previously lived in Sweden for more than two years. Uh, you cannot be currently enrolled in a master's program at the Swedish university or have previously, previously been awarded an SI scholarship or hold a degree from a Swedish university. The aim of the scholarship is to develop future global leaders who will contribute to the goals of the UN 2030 agenda and contribute to a positive and sustainable development in their home countries and region. So this is why we look for ideal candidates who have a strong and relevant professional background, demonstrated leadership experience from employment, an ambition and potential to bring positive social change, experience from involvement in a civil society or NGO sector, extensive, extensive networking skills and relevant platforms. And the relevant platform is why we look for a strong, relevant professional background so that you have a platform you can return to so that you're not like uh, straight from a university in, for example, Nigeria, and then come straight to a, a university in Sweden. You need to have a professional background. And also a clear idea of how a study program in Sweden would contribute to the sustainable development goals um, or the prioritized areas. And the prioritized areas are for uh, countries in Eastern Europe and and Turkey, as well as Russia. So um, uh, considering your countries, uh, it's to contribute to the uh, sustainable development goals. So I'm gonna show you now a short video uh, on how to apply 
uh, this is because it contains a lot of important information regarding dates and we will get back to this presentation uh, just in three minutes. Are you ambitious with a strong professional background and looking to make a difference in the world? Would you like to be granted a fully funded scholarship to pursue a master's degree in Sweden? Here is how to apply for a scholarship from the Swedish Institute, a government agency. We have several scholarship programs for applicants from different countries, all listed on our website, si.se. First, find out if there is a scholarship program for your country of citizenship for master's studies. If yes, then check on the site to see if you meet the eligibility criteria of the specific scholarship program. If you meet the criteria, next find the list of master's programs that are eligible for our scholarships and what subjects are prioritized. The competition is tough, so only a small percentage of applicants will receive scholarships. If you can't find any scholarships you are eligible for, visit studyinsweden.se to learn more about scholarships provided by universities and other organizations. If you find a Swedish Institute scholarship you are eligible for, go to universityadmissions.se to apply for master's programs that are eligible for SI scholarships. In Sweden, University Admissions handles all applications and application fees to the various Swedish universities. Remember, you must not miss any of their deadlines, and if you have any questions, contact University Admissions directly. Once you applied for master's programs, submitted the required documents, and paid the application fee to University Admissions, make sure you save the application number that is shown on your account at universityadmissions.se. You will need it when you apply for the Swedish Institute scholarships. Time now to come back to si.se for your scholarship application. Prepare and gather all the required documents according to the instructions published on our website and listed in the forms. For many of the documents, you must use SI's form. Make sure you read through the instructions carefully. The more time and effort you put into following the instructions, the more likely your application will be successful. Apply online and apply on time. Fill out the online application form and attach all your documents during the application period. And don't wait until last minute. Late applications will not be accepted. Now the excitement begins. The wait. First University Admissions will do their evaluation. They will publish the results of your applications for master's programs at universityadmissions.se. Did you get in? Congratulations! If you have been accepted to a master's program, we will evaluate your scholarship application and make a selection among eligible applicants. We will publish the list of successful scholarship applicants on our website, and if you are one of the recipients, you will also receive a confirmation email. Welcome to the SI Network for Future Global Leaders, a platform to help you grow professionally and build your network while in Sweden. Questions? Check out the frequently asked questions on si.se. We suggest you visit the site once in a while for updates. Good luck! So, um, as you might see, there, there was a lot of information. So I, I will be sending you all the link to the video as well as this presentation to you and Marazio later. Um, I'll just head back to the last slide here. So, a quick recap, uh, how to apply for the master's program. You have to apply for uh, a master's program at the university admissions by 15th of January next year at latest and also send all the required documents and pay the application fees uh, to them as well and this is a separate uh, agency so SI the Swedish Institute has nothing to do with this and we can't affect them or influence them in any way so you have to make sure to read uh, everything on their web page to make sure that you everything is done correctly on time and once that is done, then you can apply for the Swedish Institute uh, Global Professional Scholarship. And we will open on, I should have typed it down, we, we open on the 8th of February. 
uh, at midnight. And we will close the application on the 18th of February at, as you can see down below on the just three o'clock central European time. And then we will announce the result at the end of April, probably on the 28th of April. Um, so that was uh, the short presentation. I have just one more thing I want to add um, before we go to the questions. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm unfortunately not able to comment or assist on individual applicants applications regarding their eligibility as this would create an unfair advantage. You have to use your best judgment and decide what you believe uh, is most appropriate according to your situation. If you believe your experience should be counted as work or leadership experience, you can count them as long as you can provide the required proof for this experience. However, I've read your questions that were sent to me by Amaratsu, and I will answer a few, a few that is personal because I'll use them as examples uh, to highlight areas that will hopefully make it more understandable for everyone. So with that said, I'm gonna stop this presentation um, and let you Amaratsu uh, continue yours with the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the short presentation. And we progress to the Q and A. Um, I have to repeat what you mentioned. Um, we received so many questions in total. Um, I received them uh, in total. I received um, two hundred and um, seventeen questions. And um, I sorted the questions out, and after sorting out, I had about 100 and, 150 that I, I, I had believed should be answered. But after communicating with you, you made me understand that many of those questions were personal cases, individual cases, and that it won't be fair to respond to personal questions. But you, you selected the general questions that you will react to. So um, here is a compiled list of the general questions. And then we also have the frequently asked questions. So um, I will just um, read the question. And of course, you, you react to these questions. The first question. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Amaratu. I think this is the questions you sent me at the beginning, the first time before. Uh, I, can, I, can do the, I can share the screen with the last presentation you sent me. OK, OK. Uh, okay, you're right. You're right. Let me. Uh, <laughs> no worries. I have it right here. Just give me a second. Um, uh, um, okay. So. This is the yeah. questions that you sent me. Yeah. Yes. So, do you want to read the questions or? Yeah, let me read. We have, um, please, if I don't get the name right, pardon me. We have Tamaklu from Ghana. He says, My question is, what measures do you have in place to make sure that all eligible programs on the SI list are evenly distributed to match the total number of scholarship slots available by not creating traffic to some particular programs? Um, first of first off, um, you have to apply uh, to the uh, programs that you want to study uh, and the university you want to study uh, at uh, before you even apply to the uh, scholarship. So we, we really can't control what you apply to, but of course we do have um, uh, um, ways and measures to make sure that we evenly dis distribute between countries, between regions, between globally, and uh, equality, of course, um, making sure that we get enough, try to get a lot of um, female applicants as well, even there's a male dominated um, majority who gets the scholarship at this time. Um, but of course, I mean, take, uh, take it to the extreme and what if, uh, all the applicants uh, made an application to the Chalmers University, for example, then it would be, of course, a lot of focus there. But I mean, first off, it's 
it's up to the university to admit you to the program. So, and then we will make sure to uh, make a spread with the, between, I mean, universities in Sweden as well as programs. Okay. Uh, we have Israel from Nigeria. Israel says, or is asking, what's the biggest reason why people don't get selected for the SI scholarship? The biggest reason is, uh, of course, the tough competition. Um, last year, we had close to 8,000 applications uh, from all over the world, and we were able to award 420 scholarships uh, this year. Uh, which gives uh, approximately like 2% uh, of all applicants uh, uh, receive the uh, scholarship. And for next year, we estimate that we will probably have even more uh, applications uh, due to this pandemic and that people need, want to study. So, uh, and as I mentioned earlier in my presentation, the the amount of scholarships that we will be we will be able to provide next year is less than this year. So the competition is probably the biggest reason why people don't get selected. And I would say that the second biggest reason is that people haven't read everything online uh, at our web page. We have a lot of information um, to just to be transparent. We have a big uh, frequently asked question site. Uh, a lot of information as well so please make sure to read everything i know it's a lot but you have almost everything you need on the web page uh, so another a big reason to why people don't get selected is because they haven't read all the requirements okay so Pena from ghana is asking what is the specific number assigned for scholarship intake for 2021 that is 350 scholarship uh, intake uh, for next year. Okay, that's specific. So yep. um, Oyewale from Nigeria is asking, SI states mm -hmm. that apart from academic reference, the second reference should preferably be from a social work experience. If one has less than one year experience from social work, can a reference from that be accepted? What exactly is SI looking for when it comes to the references? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, I wanted to highlight this because I will answer the first part of the question is uh, at least one of the letters of reference must be based on your work experience. Um, and if you fulfill the work experience, you know, the 3000 hours just on that, the second letter could be based on your academic performance or any other type of work. And but we, it's a merit if the second letter of reference is based on your involvement in networks like civil society organization uh, outside your regular work. So um, it's not a, that the academic is like the first, we are, we are talking about the reference, um, reference letter must be from your work experience first, and the second could be academic performance. So it's all on the webpage as well on the uh, frequently asked question site. So make sure to go through that as well. Okay, Chagosi from Nigeria is asking, since proof for proof of work and leadership are meant to be submitted. Okay, since uh, for proof of work and leadership, we are meant to submit maximum of five documents. In a situation where one obtains a document from a, the notary public uh, and the document becomes six, is it okay to submit six documents? Uh, in general, no, because the notary public document, sh it shouldn't be a document, it should be a stamp. So if you cannot um, authenticate your reference from the, your work reference or your leadership reference with a stamp, then you have to use a notary public and they will stamp it for you. So they will not, I hope not will be a need for another document. So um, the general rule is maximum five, yeah. Okay. So um, Kim from Vietnam is asking, does SI have any specific focus for each country considering applicants major background ETC? Uh, no, we don't have any specific focus. Um, we try to, the only focus we have that we make sure that the applicants within the country uh, compete against each other first and then based on the region, of course. Uh, but I mean, the, the majors and the background, no. Uh, 
it's just up to you to make sure that you have a connection from your background to what you want to apply and then you want to what you want to do later uh, when you return home okay so alani from nigeria is asking is there a program priority in the scholarship selection uh the priority that we have uh is that the we want to give priority to uh programs that uh contribute or uh, deals with the uh, uh un 2030 agenda uh, of sustainable development goals and this includes um as well as your, the work experience that you have and it's all on the web page as well that priority will be given to those uh, fields okay so um francis from ghana is asking last year i had admission at Chalmers University of Technology without scholarship. Can I apply for only scholarship or, um, or I have to go through the whole process again? Uh, this depends if Francis was, if he has uh, been admitted to Chalmers University and started studying either on uh, distance or if he was able to go to Sweden and begin his studies in Sweden then you cannot apply for the scholarship like for the second year but if you yeah if you if you decline your uh, your admission to chalmers you have to like do the whole process again you have to be admitted to chalmers first and then you have to apply for the scholarship again okay 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 i i think um if you want to apply for si it needs to be a fresh admission application yeah you mu you must be able to prove that you have um yeah been admitted to the university now, now well in the beginning of next year okay um get a chill from ethiopia is asking are there any privileges for applicants affiliated with swedish universities eg karolinska institute or any privilege for female applicants uh, there are no uh, privileges for applicants uh, affiliated with the swedish universities we um uh but i mean we do however uh, make try to make sure that um the um, equality i mean between the female uh, applicants uh, we we do want to see more female applicants and female uh, recipients of this scholarship so um they're not like a privilege for female applicants but they do uh, they do have a little bit more focus from our side and that depends on the situations in the countries of course i mean um in a lot of i mean the instant uh gender and in some countries uh, where we where we uh, look for applicants uh let's see now sorry do you still do you hear me yeah yeah, yeah. of course okay sorry i got some disturbance here um of so course are yeah there was the female applicants that i was uh, referring to that um we know for a fact that in some countries uh female have females have uh, a, a little bit more difficult um chances of getting work and getting the work experience needed because the way of society looks um but they still have to of course uh, fulfill the 3000 hour requirement but we do try to uh, see if there's uh, females, uh, female applicants that we can uh, address the scholarship to. But of course, at, but of course, in the end, uh, the quality of the application is the biggest thing we uh, look for. Okay, so we have Fatai from Nigeria is asking some courses are multidisciplinary, disciplinary in nature, which means many professional, many professionals would be able to apply for such master's degree. What chances do I stand as an applicant to such a course? This is a question that um, is typical. We, we get a lot of questions um, based on um, what applicants think that they, we can say about the, the, the courses and the programs at the universities. So this is like, this is a question that you need to ask the university that you are looking forward to uh, study at. Um, I have no idea what the kind of chances an applicant from, let's say, Nigeria stand for a course in Stockholm, uh, depending on which program uh, he or she wants to apply to. Uh, so we can't 
we we don't know how many people uh, have applied to a specific program or masters. Um, but if if it's a multidisciplinary course in nature, for example, uh, that many could be able to apply to, then of course the the competition will be tough. So the only chance is a strong uh, and a good um, application to that specific program. So um, I think so, we'll go over to the next slide, which has, um, these are questions. I, I have group, public groups where people interested in SI scholarship come together to you know, seek for information and of course um, educate themselves. So I received a lot of questions. And these nine questions happen to be the frequently asked questions I received. So I compiled them and hoping that you, you'll be able to give us satisfactory responses. <laughs> because um, sometimes I, I, I don't know how perfect my responses are. You know, it, it might have worked in my case, but maybe it might not work in another case. So um, the first one says, can religious organizations serve for civil society, network, social work, or volunteer? Yeah, this is like a, also a question that we need to you need to study the um, our web page uh, carefully, and the answers are there. I mean, we prioritize uh, a strong professional background, which basically is full time work. And depending on where you have been working, like in civil society networking, social work, and volunteers, um, the information is online, and I can't really give you like a perfect answer. This is something that you as an applicant must decide, okay, is this valid? Is this uh, something that SI needs to read or needs to take in consideration uh, regarding my application? Okay. Then the second one is, um, can the field of work experience be different from choosing master's program? Uh, I mean, it can, yeah, of course. Um, but once again, uh, study our webpage, we we have a, uh, we give our priority to a field of work that's related to both the master's program and the UN sustainable goals. Uh, this is like a, a uh, like a red a thread like through all the uh, the applications. So um, yes, you you can have a different field ex uh, work experience from your chosen master's program, but you have to realize that you it's obvious that you might not be prioritized. Okay, um, the next one is, is the same, you just answered it. Yeah, the same. Um, yeah. I progressed to number four, which is, um, is work, uh, work experience acquired as far as a decade ago, is it acceptable? Um, yes, uh, I mean, you of course have to make sure that you can uh, authenticate it as well and um, that it's, relevant for your master's program and for the scholarships priorities, of course. Okay. Then the next one is um, one without NGO volunteer experience, are they also eligible to apply? Yes, of course. Um, as we said in the, uh, on our webpage, it's a merit if you have a like social work or civil society or NGO experience, um, it's a merit. Uh, it's not a demand, but it's, yeah. It's up to you, uh, the applicants, to make your own, up your own mind. So, okay, yeah, and I receive this a lot. What is the minimum and maximum age restriction for the scholarship? How old should I be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I get this question a lot as well. I mean, basically, in Sweden, we have a, a saying um, at the universities where it's, we call it like a lifelong learning. So you're never too old uh, to study uh, or apply for a scholarship. Uh, so there's no maximum age. Um, you just have to be able to make an application. And if you can make an application and if you can travel and if you can study, then you're eligible for the scholarship. Of course, minimum, you have to have at least a, uh, a bachelor degree in your home country and you have to work, been working for a couple of years. So, uh, yeah, I can't say any minimum, but I think you can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and um, the next one is about CPGS, the academic grade, CGPA. 
watch There's no, yeah. minimum grade. We don't have any uh, academic grade or minimum uh, CGPA for the uh, for the scholarship. Um, however, the university, uh, the master's program that you want to study could have. So you need to make sure that you have um, read all the information online from the, maybe uh, if your university is Stockholm University, make sure that you have visited their web page and ask or send them an email and ask all the questions uh, if what the minimum is of academic grade and such. But for the scholarship, we only we only look, have you been accepted to the master's program at the university, at Stockholm University? If you have, then you're eligible for the scholarship. Okay. Uh, and then the next one is about documents. People who applied last year and their documents are still in the portal. Um, how do they proceed with a new application? If you cannot delete the old documents, then you should probably create a new, uh, a new, uh, how do you say it? Mm. Account? Just, new... Yeah, a new account and then make an, a new application. But try to uh, uh, erase or delete the old documents first. And if you, can, if, you know, if you can't do that, please send us a message and we can try and see if we can work it out from our, uh, from our point. Okay, and then lastly, a reference letter without official email address, and neither uh, an official domain or website, is it acceptable? Um, we have to be able to authenticate your references. So I can't say what you should or should not have uh, as a, but I mean, as much contact information as possible. Um, as I said, because if we can't authenticate, if we need to do that, then it could be a risk of you not getting a scholarship. So make sure to get all the contact information in there as possible. Okay, um, I'm receiving a lot of questions in my direct chat, but, <laughs> but they're all personal questions. So, <laughs> so I, I think, um, you have satisfactorily responded to the questions we, we have presented and people still have some concerns which um, they probably need to start the website to find out the questions. They probably need to go to the website, find out more. So I don't know if there's any anything you want to react to or you want to talk about before we end this session. Uh, no, not really. I mean, um, please, do, do, if you don't want to, I mean, go through the entire website, I mean, at least go through the frequently asked questions. Um, they have, uh, I mean, some of them have uh, very long answers and very fulfilled answers. So, I mean, and if you can't find the answer in the FAQ section, then you have the then you have the uh, possibility to send us an email um, directly to the uh, Swedish Institute scholarship team, and if we see that there's a question there that cannot be answered on the web page, we will answer it directly to you, and then we will try to post it online. Uh, so we will update the frequently asked question section as we get along. So that will be my. Okay, I'm seeing a question I think is not really personal. Um, it says, can a letterhead print be used in place of stamp? No, I mean, a letterhead is something that you can just add. Uh, you can do it yourself, basically. Uh, so you, you need to have some, I know that the stamp question is, we get it a lot. Why do we need to stamp? Why is this such, um, um, why is this such uh, an old fashioned way? And um, it's, it's basically also, I mean, one step to, to, to make the, uh, the process a little bit harder to make sure that we really get applicants that really, really want the scholarship. And I mean, but yeah, we are still, we are looking into that um, and try and see if there's a way to make it digital but at the moment we don't have the right tools for that. So um, I see that I got a question here, how to delete them, it's not possible. Okay, um, if you have, uh, send us an email through the uh, FAQ section, you have it at the bottom of the page. 
uh, and we will try to help you um, from our point. Okay. So I believe there's no other question. You've been able to address all our concerns. But um, if, there, if anyone have any further question, of course, people are always responding. They just send you an email. So I don't know if you can share the, the way they will just send them an email to receive a quick feedback. Um, one question, uh, just one second. I'll, uh, I'll send the link here in the chat. Um, I see that again, do we have to delete previously applications? Um, yeah, because you, you cannot use previously, previous applications, you have to make a new one. But here I posted in the chat the, um, the web page. And so if you go to that web page, the FAQ site, you can scroll down to the bottom. And then if you can't find the answer to your questions in the FAQ section, you can send us an email. People are posting, uh, asking some personal questions. Yeah, I, I saw that the, the waiver fee um, is a waiver for application fee. I think he's speaking of the application fee to the university admissions. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the, the 900 Swedish crowns that you have to apply. And this is something we cannot um, do anything about. That's the university admissions. That's the fee that they charge everyone. So uh, unfortunately, we, there's no uh, waiver for that. Okay, um, at this point, we, we've done 45 minutes or thereabouts. At this point, we want to conclude this session. And of course, we want to say a very big thank you to our special guest. You know, when I, when I asked you to be our guest, I, I, I wasn't sure if you would accept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm also trying to, um, uh, I mean, uh, at, at, at this year has been uh, quite special as it has been for a lot of people. I mean, everything has been digital and normally uh, during this autumn, we would have be able to meet our scholarship holders and be able to do travel to different countries to, to talk about the scholarship as well. And this is just a way to make sure that uh, I can still uh, meet people like, like you, uh, the scholarship holders and potential uh, applicants. Uh, so we just try to make everything online. Okay, I want to say thank you very much. Um, thank you so very much for, for being part of this. And I want to thank all participants. Thank you very much. And those of us that sent in their questions, those of us that still have concerns, you can reach out to me personally. From my experiences, I will also advise you. Of course, I'm not the scholarship manager, so I wouldn't know the perfect responses to your questions. But, but I want to thank you for being part of this, and I want to thank our guests. Thank you so very much. Yeah, thank you thank so much. Thank you so very much. And thank you all participants. And have a wonderful Christmas holidays. <laughs>